Good morning, everyone. Welcome to those four girls. We're missing a couple of girls today. Um, it is Thursday. We're in March already. Can you guys believe we're in March? It's amazing. Um, so happy March. Um, happy spring. Some of you are not experiencing spring, I understand still. Um, <laughs> Barb is buried in snow. Shannon is buried in snow. And Shannon's buried in snow so much that she wasn't able to make it this morning. <laughs> No, the poor thing, she's um, she's sick. So, Shannon, um, please get better. We miss you already. Uh, you guys, we are excited. This is going to be a jam-packed show, and uh, I want to uh, welcome our panel. We've got three awesome ladies from the community, and we're talking today about owning your content, owning your website, and owning your audience. And we're going to really dive into that. But let me start with our panel and e introduce Yvonne. Hi, welcome. everybody. Tell us um, who you know, who you are and where you hail from, and just a bit about you. Um, I'm located in California right now. Born in Germany, though, so I'm always good for some jokes, as we just had in the green room. Um, I am with Ask Evie. I am the technician behind helping people with small businesses take care of their website, online presence, and social media. I love it. And she is our resident selfie in the community. Um, we have a selfie project, and it's always a uh, <laughs> Yvonne supports our selfie project wholeheartedly, and we love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I um, think so, there, are, there are more pictures out there of me without makeup than with makeup. <laughs> yes, I, right? <laughs> but that's all right. You're gorgeous either way. <laughs> so, we have Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hello, ladies and all you watching. I'm Cheryl Locke, and I'm in warm and sunny Las Vegas. Oh, so for all of you that, <laughs> all of you that are freezing, I'm really sorry, but I uh, personally, I have some sites. I help some small businesses, and I also help a longtime blogger friend for his hot blog tips by making videos and answering questions for his readers. So that's what I do. Ask me a question and I may have an answer. Very nice. I love that. And then next we have Sandy. Hi, everyone. So I'm actually from cold Canada. I wish you could look outside. There is snow, so no, no sunshine and warm weather here. And uh, I'm a digital strategist, and I help entrepreneurs break down technology into the need to know, so kind of cutting out the overwhelm and just going straight to what will help them grow their presence online. And uh, you can find me at sandycitymedia.com. Awesome. And then, of course, my cohort today, Barb Jasper. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am freezing my buns off like Sandy. So, yeah, us to connect here. We, we don't care much, Cheryl, that it's hot where you are because we're so cold right now. March is not spring, and uh, I'm here waiting and waiting and waiting for the sun to finally melt all this stuff away. It's so cold here. But anyway, everybody's been complaining about the winter. Let's move on. Indeed. <laughs> 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 I could complain about the winter all day. Yeah, um, let's just no, move on. Let's just move on. So you guys, we're going to be talking about um, a variety of things um, regarding owning your own website. What if the lights go out on social media? What happens to your follower base? Are they following you on a different platform i.e. your website do you have them in an email format are you you know do, are you connecting with them basically outside of social media um, do you have are you a network marketer and you have a corporate website um, that your corporation owns but it's in your name do you, what are you doing with that you don't own that website um, how do you get started with a website does it cost you five grand to build a website what are the resources um, to find hosting and what is the difference between self-hosted and not self-hosted. I don't know what the not self-hosted actual term and tech <laughs> technical term is. Um, so these are all the things that we're going to talk about. So Yvonne, I'm going to let's just dive in and you, um, you've been doing uh, social media building websites and this is really one of your favorite topics. So let's talk about, um, pick, a, pick a topic. No, I mean we're really going <laughs> to just dive in. So let's talk about self-hosted versus not self-hosted. And that kind of incorporates the social media. Well, you know, what if the lights go out on social media too? So, so self-hosted versus non-self-hosted includes, let's start with the social media. So you put all of your effort into Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter, which one ever it is, 
and they decide they change the layout, they close down, God forbid, suddenly all of the work you have put in there is gone. Which again speaks for having your own platform, which means your own blog, your own website. Once you decided, okay, you're going to really do your own thing, you have the possibility between self-hosted, which is your own HTML-based website, Joomla, Drupal, or for a lot of us, WordPress, just because it makes it easier. Don't worry about the platform first. Um, you can figure that out with a little bit help of other people. Um, but you also have the possibility on that side of non-self-hosted with, for example, WordPress gives you two options. You have to get your own server space and set it up and the whole technical stuff. Or you can just go to WordPress.com. I always mix these up. Um, and say, just like with Blogger, I want to have a blog, help me. And you host with their servers, and you don't have to deal with the technical stuff. But again, there comes the problem back in, just like with Facebook or Google+, Plus. what if they say they're not doing it anymore? So your safest bet to, to have all of the work you do safe is really a self-hosted self solution, which so, approach ever you choose. And that's... That's really, that right there um, is just a whole piece of education because, you know, when we got, and there's a lot of us, and I don't know about you guys, Cheryl, Sandy, when you guys first started getting on to social media and building websites and all that kind of stuff, you know, how did you guys go about learning it and, you know, find, figuring out which way to go? Because I was like, I was like, self-hosted versus not self-hosted? What the heck does that mean? Uh, well, my first blog, um, I'm dating myself a little bit here, was a blogger blog in like 2002, 2001, I'd say. So, And it was more of a journal type thing. So that was just really in the early days getting started. And like um, we mentioned, it was just five seconds I had a blog and I was up. Um, but flash fast forward to today, everything is more, I'm more directed towards being self-hosted because I want to have more control of my content. And the best example I've heard, or the sort of analogy, uh, you know, self-hosted versus hosted, or you know, Facebook and all these other platforms, is we're renting when we use Facebook. It's free. We're not paying. They can change their terms of uh, service. Any they do it all the time, right? So if they decide tomorrow they don't want to publish your content, or they've even censored content, we really are at their mercy. Whereas on our own platforms, we can control that more. I love that. Um... And that's that's something that, that there's a lot of comments. It's gonna go into the comments really quick. I'm gonna start with this one. Uh, not uh, not regarding <laughs> any inter website stuff at all. From Kirsten, Barb, who needs sunshine when you have lovely flowers to brighten your day. <laughs> yeah, Kirsten, so. that's my wonderful husband. He showers me the flowers all the time. As soon as one bunch is dead, I get another one. So yeah, lucky me. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I think that's just so sweet. Um, Heather Crafter says, so need this topic. I continually forget that my web, my hub, not an afterthought. What do you guys think about that? Like that's, I mean, I think I'm seeing that. That's what I started with. I'm like, eh, it's just a website. I don't need to do anything, blah, 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 you know. And now here I'm going, holy crap, I need to fix it. I, I, would, <laughs> I would put that as people that, maybe go on vacation and you may go and stay at a hotel but you don't have all of your things there that's not where p people are gonna call you to get a hold of you for everything going on they may beep you because you're there for a short time but you want them to come to your your home which is your website and that's where they mainly are gonna find you rather than somewhere else and I think for people who are just starting out that the Facebook, Google, Pinterest, LinkedIn platforms are so strong and they're such a big presence. It's almost like here is a preset menu. All you have to do is plop your name in and some profile information and you're ready to go. So people tend to fall back and rely on it, not realizing one day the lights may go out. And then what do we do? We don't have any of that protected. So going back to your own website is almost like putting everything in one protected site. If you want to spread it out, that's fine but you do need some place to hold on to that. And I agree with that, Bob. And um, collecting email lists and all of that, which Lainey is doing a lot of classes on too, 
um, the best way to do that, to have one specific spot where you can send people and from there on out send them to your social media is just your website or your blog. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't do social media. I have a friend of mine, photographer, who does an amazing job on Facebook and gets most of her uh, referrals through Facebook. But again, you can lose it and there comes copy copyright issues and you mentioned it just makes life easy using Facebook or Google Plus. As um, Sunny mentioned right here, just to pull that up for a second, um, she mentioned that it is daunting. Yes, it is because it's so much technical stuff. It's so much things you should know up front. Often you don't know it. Um, honestly, if you just have somebody that can hold your hand just a little bit, it is really not that daunting. And specifically with WordPress, it's not much more than a Word document. There are a lot of buttons that are look the same as in a Word document. As long as you have somebody that can tell you up front, these are the, the things that I fell into that I did wrong in the beginning, it's really not that difficult. I have people who are completely computer illiterate that are updating their own WordPress website. Mm -hmm. But it is an education in the end when you get down to the, the base fact. It, it is another education and I believe when the internet first came along and all the HTML coding and then all like Joomla and, and all those processes that help you function a website, those are languages that the average person doesn't understand. So I think when you take WordPress and you throw it in there, people think, oh, it's still coding, it's still a language. Um, and I myself went through this when, you know, we came together, the website stuff is kind of falling on me and I had to educate myself. Um, and it took me sitting down with somebody to have that one-on-one, -on -one, like you say, show what this button is, this is how it works, because I'm not a coder and I don't want to be. I want the drag and drop stuff and that isn't always out there. So to be empowered in that way, and there's that word again, um, you know, you just educate yourself, you give yourself the strength and the ability to do, it's, it's baby steps and just a couple baby steps can make a big difference. But in the end, it is an education. It is. Go ahead. And I, speaking, or Cheryl, go, sorry. Oh. <laughs> speaking of HTML and coding, they recently did a survey and asked people what HTML was and, and most people are on the internet in some form and most people thought it was an STD. <laughs> so that I'm serious. Oh I we goodness. just read this this past week, and so whenever you say wow. HTML to most people that are on the web, you know, you think, oh, they understand that. Obviously, they don't. But yeah. it's not something to be afraid of, like an STD. So once you follow someone, you're not going to catch anything. You're just going to learn about it and be able to work <laughs> with it. <laughs> Well, I think you just gave everybody to, to something to think about. Cheryl. You have you have to give them a little something, and so everybody out there that says I know what HTML is, I may not fully understand it. You are one up on a lot of users, so keep that in mind when you're talking to people. They may not have a clue of what you're talking about. Picking up on the not having a clue. Um, in the green room we've talked about, there are probably people out there who have no clue where to start and what to do. Heather Craft um, mentioned, it's right here, um, it was once described to me this way, you purchase a domain name, it's like buying an RV, you still have to find a place to park it. I like that analogy, I'm doing it a little bit different. How I explain it is when you buy your URL, no matter where you do, name.com, GoDaddy, that's your house number. The hosting is your property, so where you place your house on. WordPress or Joomla, whatever you want to use is your house and your website itself is all the nice things you put in it. Just for people that are completely new to self-hosted websites, that's how I explain it and usually it makes sense to people. That does make really, that actually makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to go grab another comment here um, from Renee. Um, she's watching over on YouTube and she says, I agree that you should have your own website or at least your own email list for when social media changes. Even if social media doesn't go away, it most definitely will change. <laughs> and, she, and Renee, you're not commenting in the wrong place at all. So this is perfect. Um, so, you know, we, we're, there, a lot of people don't have their, 
their email, like because it's an autoresponder. A lot of this stuff is is new to people. They don't they don't even know how to get online, how to start. They're like, I got to get an email list. Well, what does that entail? You know, so what is find your resources for hosting, for autoresponders, for that all that kind of stuff. Like, where do you, what do you guys use? Where did you find it, and how did you decide what was the best for you? Because again, we talked about um, I was when we talked about on Mia's show a couple weeks ago. Not every tool works for everybody, so let's talk about you know what what works best for you guys. I still we use. We need to take a drink because oh. we said tool. <laughs> tool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry over from another show. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy, go ahead. Oh, no worries. Um, so going back to the comment about where to get started, I think it does boil down to education. So for a lot of people, when they think website, they think it still needs to be coded and they need to have somebody do it for them. But if you're just getting started, there's nothing wrong with using some of the free WordPress themes, um, having someone help you with that. But I really think that WordPress and all these other content management systems have really leveled the playing ground because you don't necessarily need someone, a designer, to update your pages every single time you have a change. But that wasn't answering your question. You said what uh, tools do you use for um, email list. I personally still recommend to a lot of my clients MailChimp. It's free when you get started. It has a really um, easy, intuitive interface. I happen to be a little fan of the, the monkey, the MailChimp monkey, and I the just the overall interface is intuitive and doesn't require a lot of setup in my opinion. Perfect. How about Sam, um, Cheryl, how about you? I would yeah, if you're just going to get started and you don't have a big audience, yeah, the free MailChimp. If you can go free and it works, that's the best way to get started and then you can look into advancing as you build and need more more different things to put into it. All right, perfect. And Yvonne, you're shaking your head, so I'm assuming you you're in agreement with that. <laughs> I fell, I re fell in love with MailChimp on the email side of things. Um, I have referred clients a lot to Constant Contact. Um, lately, though, they are falling short on some features that MailChimp just got. For example, automatically sending out emails to your followers about a new blog post. So they just added the RSS feed, which takes all of your blog posts, puts it in some nice coding and sends out an email and lets all your followers know you have a new blog post. Um, on the technical side, it's going to get a little bit nerdy here for a second. Um, I personally prefer name.com to buy your URL. Lately also have used GoDaddy just for the URL, not for the hosting. Um, how I learned about my not liking and liking, trial and error. I have uh, had clients hosting with GoDaddy some of the longest times I spent on customer service ever. Um, then later on, switched to HostGator. HostGator unluckily got bought by a bigger company, so website speed dropped down. Again, I'm keeping the nerdiness short here. <laughs> and I am now actually hosting with a medium-sized company down in, I need to say a lie, Virginia, that's when you meet people online. You never know where they're actually sitting. Um, have been testing his servers now for about half a year. Speed went up, and the whole Google optimization of the server is just amazing that my own sites jumped up in page rank two steps. I'm not going to explain that. If somebody wants to know more about it, feel free to message me. I don't want to get too nerdy. But again, you just learn by trial and error. Um, I agree, start out with the cheap stuff, but you have to know that when it's free, it's often worth what you pay for it. Meaning, free themes have or might have the problem of having coding issues where there are security issues. So if you use free themes, stay best with some that WordPress is actually offering you. There is the 2012, and I think now they also have the, the 2014. They have some pretty nice themes, and I would start with them instead of Googling and just using free themes you find out there. It's and like... You're talking, Yvonne, you're talking about WordPress.org with the free themes, right? The yeah. self-hosted. The self-hosted, yeah. So, .org. Yes. So, 
to clarify that. So that way people knew what the, where the free themes, Thank where you. it was relating to. No, 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 it's okay. So talking about themes and, um, you know, I, I want to pull up, um, let's see, PV, um, this is a great um, example. So he just, um, he said, I recently migrated all my content from my blogger page to my own domain at WordPress base with the help of a blogger friend. My question is, will I lose the comments I receive there are bloggers? No? It's been a while since I've looked at that, but I was going to say I haven't moved a blogger to a WordPress in a long time, so I wouldn't say. But if you just lose the comments, you can rebuild that if you're happy where you're at. Don't so let it stop a, you for that little that little thing. Is that that's a really good example of of you know there's Wix, there's Blogger. What other um what other you know basically Blogger type non-self-hosted sites are there that people are using that probably that they should start to stray away from and move over to a self-hosted you know what are what are those ones that you, that we should avoid well, you've got like tumblr i mean there's a bazillion out there and whether or not i would use the words move away from or stray away from and completely leave that if you've built an audience there then i would say keep that blogger blog and lead them to your new main site rather than just abandoning it. If you've built an audience, use it to push it to wherever you want to or to put your little updates. Just don't leave and leave that audience sitting empty, not not knowing what to do when you could actually transfer them over. Well, that's your voice, your audience, and or your audience is hearing your voice there, and your audience may not be on your new platform, and that's why you have them because of where they are. I know people who tumble according to my daughter they don't they don't want to leave that that is their life they enjoy it it's it's a community for them and so you're right when you say don't just abandon it and move on for something else try Make. and integrate it or or you know move them slowly or let them know or even just pop in there occasionally but don't abandon what you've already got success with and you can use them in a combination in the problem of blogger to wordpress i would need to look it up um, there are definitely commenting plugins as well as other plugins that can grab social comments and can plug them in. So if somebody shares your blog post on Twitter, that plugin grabs that post and can put it into your comments. So there are way, ways now to combine these. Um, I have a Tumblr account, don't know actually my login right now because what I'm doing with it, I'm using a third party application and I'm just feeding into it. So I'm using my blog posts and I'm using some social posts that I'm doing, going through that third party application and it automatically posts it on Tumblr because I am not doing anything over there but I don't want to lose that following. Mm -hmm. Actually, I saw that, oh, go okay. ahead. I was no, no, going to no, say that there was, a, there was a comment that I saw that was about MailChimp. I, um, it was, can you use MailChimp without producing a newsletter? Um, yeah, from and, and I, Yeah, and I would say if you're not going to send out a newsletter, I would actually still recommend sharing when you have a, a new blog post, and you can totally set that up with MailChimp. So it'll be like a, an RSS almost. And again, it lets you build your mailing list, but if you're not at the point where you want to share a newsletter on a weekly basis or every two weeks, people will get notified um, when something new gets published. That's information to know. Um, and our, I got I to gotta share um, Shannon. Shannon, we missed you on screen. She said, I agree, Yvonne. Trial and error is best. You need to work with what you feel comfortable with. So that's, that's huge. Um, and then Carmen said, I've heard different things about the SEO of the drag and drop sites, Weebly, Wix, etc. Some say the drag and drop sites don't compete well for SEO against WordPress or custom built sites. What do you guys think? I agree, they don't work well. They used to. They used to be able to rank up above everything, and blogger blogs used to to be huge. You'd find them on everything ranking above. But Google has changed so many things that those kind of get pushed to the side and that is more of a sharing community you're building rather than an organic from the search. And you're forced with like Wix, you, if you build the site there, you have to host with them. You can't, you can't host anywhere else. I learned that the hard way. You know, that's one of my passion topics. 
Um, the problems you run into when you build with Wix or with um, GoDaddy's Web Builder or I think QuickBooks is now offering, everybody is offering these free websites. And all they are going after, 95%, is the look. So you have a lot of images. Images means it's not a written word. Not a written word means Google can't index it. The little Google bots can't run through and actually read what's on your website. Um, yeah. And I lost my thread. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that, and it's just well, well, let's pull up a comment then. Well, what you said was good, Yvonne. <laughs> Oh, there we got one for Mark. <laughs> yeah, we got a blooper for Mark. <laughs> Let's go to um, Robin Adams. I've used HostGator for several years and been, been very happy with our customer service. GoDaddy for buying domains with WordPress. And she's not good at coding, so I use Elegant Themes for my themes. 47 a year for a ton of great themes. Um, and then she says, any free themes I've gotten besides those on WordPress have been problems and even gotten viruses on my computer. Um, ET makes life so much easier. Uh, lots of drag and drop features. So let's talk about that. I am I am not saying HostGator is bad. Um, HostGator still has great customer service. I still have clients on HostGator. And what happened to me is um, my own website, always the one who gets trouble, went from a page load. So when somebody goes through my website till they see the full loaded page, the first time used to be four seconds on HostGator. After the, the big company bought it, it went to 10 seconds. None of us is going to wait 10 seconds for a website to load, especially when I'm selling the service. People are going to be like, dude, really? You want to build my website and then your site doesn't even load? It went, after the first initial trouble with the new server, it went down to four seconds and I'm just like, sorry. I can't do this page load, and that's when I moved. Customer service is still great. Um, elegant themes, I personally do not like because I do not like paying yearly for my themes. Um, I, am, I am a theme forest fan, themeforest.net. Problem is, you've got to do your research. There are bad themes on theme forest too. Look at the comments, look how fast they're responding to support tickets. How long are they there? How many reviews are they getting? And you can get really good themes on there. For example, two of my favorites is the U-Design theme and the Avada theme because you can do so much in the background without needing any bit of coding. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a lot. Like, I totally was like, OMG. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and read. <laughs> I'm like learning so much. I hope you, all you guys are learning a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it as nerdy, as less nerdy as possible, but with this subject, I just can't get around a few things. This is, but this is why we love you because you are. You guys are so knowledgeable, and there's this is and this is this goes back to why we did this show because there are so many women out there um, and guys too. Sorry, guys, um, that just don't know. Like we we are we don't have that experience. We're not. We don't. We just don't know. There's and there's multiple multitude of reasons why we don't know. Um, so let's not talk about that. But so what about you know how can somebody you know get started really simply? I mean, what's their best if they don't know anything? Let's go through. What would be a step by step process? Let's and let's, Cheryl and Sandy, you guys are working um, with your clients as well. You know what? When you guys are setting somebody up or helping them walk through, what's your step by step process to get them set up? Um, well, basically, first, it's finding out if they already have an existing domain, where are they, because a lot of people will purchase it in advance, like you said, or they may not um, have hosting. So generally, starting from that point of view, like, okay, where's your domain located? Do you have hosting already set up? And then there's the one-click install that a lot of hosting providers offer. So I think that's what people need to realize, that when you use a self-hosted WordPress, you're not necessarily having to go through these huge steps of FDP, you can if you want, but most hosting companies uh, will have a one-click install. So if you're doing a fresh install, you basically click on that and boom, your WordPress site, a very bare-bones default Hello World WordPress site is set up 
and then from there you can go and uh, install your theme. So generally that's kind of how I start figuring out where, um, if they've already purchased a domain, if they, if they do have a domain, getting into the back end of the C panel and doing the one click install and then going further and seeing okay what kind of theme do they want to uh, work with and at that point if it really needs to be custom built but I don't think people generally and I don't do custom design I think people when they first start out can really use the themes like uh, Yvonne had mentioned whether it's theme forest I also look at woo themes I don't think woo themes has an annual they may have two options I'd have to, I'd have to rem double check but generally I think um, the base the themes from theme forest are a good place to start before you go and you know drop several thousand dollars on a custom design is it worth dropping? I mean, most people, most small business owners don't have a couple grand to, to, to drop on a website. Is it worth it? Is it, is it worth it to, you, Yvonne and I were talking about this, you know, people are spending five grand, you know, people are charging crazy money to have a website, to build a website for people. Um, is it a ripoff? Is it worth it? What do you guys I don't think I wouldn't say it's a ripoff because if it's a talented web designer and they're pro providing something of quality, I think you have to look at where you are in your business. If you're just starting out and you're proving your concept or you're doing your minimal viable service launch, you don't need a five thousand dollar website. You need to prove that you have customers. You need to prove that you actually are interested in this. Like a year from now, do you still want to be doing that? So if you you can have a decent looking site. Uh, DIY or with the help of someone that's not going to cost you five grand. I was going to say uh, when we do custom, I don't, Brad does, my husband does the website building, but when we get a client that some of them have had old websites like the old HTML websites and we've transferred them over to like a WordPress so they can update it and do things, most of them already have a logo. New businesses that we deal with and a lot of those are very small you know, not not wanting to spend a lot of money, we get their logo off, say, their little business card. And just putting their logo as a banner or in the corner is customizing it to them rather than just having a, a free theme that you're going to see a million places. And that's not going to cost them a lot of money. So $5,000 is if you want full-blown going but if you're starting out and you can get your who's helping you a logo or something like that that they can do it and customize some colors to match your logo it's not for us it's not five thousand dollars I'm sure some do so you can still have customization without going overboard that's a good and, nuance and I agree that's, with that the the problem is um, how much time does the developer need? I have websites where I'm just doing the installation and it's a few hundred bucks just to take the technical aspect out of it. It's setting up the space, it's installing WordPress, it's installing the theme you wanted and doing a little bit customization on it and you can do the rest. With a complete WordPress website, what takes the time is developing the logo because companies often don't have that. Um, developing a color scheme, deciding on the fonts, and then I am not the content provider. I am not writing what's on your website. You have to do that. If I have to spend time for the next three months to run after you to get that content, I'm charging you for that. And that's what often makes the price. Um, yes, there are ripoffs out there that are charging you for a small, tiny website that supposedly just built for you and they are using a customized theme and they charge you $5,000. Screw that. Um, people, finally, real developers that are as painfully honest as me are working against these ripoffs and getting normal prices out there again, but it's just like with every, everything else. Social media gurus that are charging you 1200 bucks an hour to just show you how to use Facebook. You got to be careful, and you got to decide what you want and how much you want to spend for it. Well, you do trade. You do trade off paying for something, uh, paying someone to do something you can't do. There is a value in that, um, but at the same time, I think the person who is the professional guru, expert, whatever term you want to label them as, they need to understand that just because somebody doesn't know doesn't mean they deserve to be ripped off, and that that comes down to ethics. 
right? Could, Nothing more. Could I add for anyone that's looking to get a, a website and have someone like Yvonne or us build it for them to put the theme and all, you can do yourself the hugest favor ever if you decide on a logo. Decide on the picture you want for an avatar so when you're out commenting and things. Decide on your colors. Do you have a specific look you want? Get all of that in your head even if you're going and looking at other websites. So you can send Yvonne a picture and say, I love these colors together. Can we do something with that? I love this font, this and that. If you can pick those on your own rather than Yvonne or me sending you 8,000 pictures and you saying, not that shade, oh, not quite, you're going to save yourself a lot of money and I assume Yvonne would be just like dealing with me, we will be much more pleasant. <laughs> and that's, that's what I often do is when people come to me and you wouldn't believe how often I get the phone call off, my web designer is gone and I can't get in my website. Um, especially with the new installation, go out there, look at websites, don't look at the whole thing, you like that header, you like that font, you like that picture, you like boxes behind your content or you like it completely open. If you come even just with a piece of paper and say, I want it to look like that, I'm going to say, okay, we can do that, you shouldn't do that because it's not a good user experience. And I will work with you, but trying with an empty piece of paper to understand what's in your head, what you want, is not easy. Um, and Brian, he mentioned in there, and we kind of touched on that before, he said um, if we think non-techs should even try to do that or just know your limits. Um, I know a lot of developers literally offer now I get the hosting set up for you, I get your name, I get your WordPress installation and the theme installed. If you really don't want to get that nerdy, find somebody who offers it and gets it done for you and then you just do it your own, plug in your own content and your own images. Mm -hmm. I, I think it. just to add to Yvonne's point, I think basically it's education, knowing the limitations of the different platforms so then you can select that person to work with because you could easily um, be convinced to do something on Weebly or Wix by de depending on who you talk to. So even if you're not going to be the one doing it, at least educate yourself about what the choices and limitations of each platform are. So it's become very clear that WordPress seems to be the place to go for the average user to start with a website. Unless you're, you're, you are hiring a web designer to totally outfit a custom site, we have a question about widgets and plugins. Yes, we hear those are amazing and they can make your site awesome, but they are are they something that the new user needs to touch on? Or is it that the themes that we can purchase, the free themes or the purchase themes, are, are the content pieces that are there enough to get us going? What do the widgets and what do the plugins do? And how can they make your life better? And how can they make your life worse? People, when they start out using WordPress, often get carried away. Plugins also can bite you in the booty. If you have too many plugins, and that already starts often if you have the lower end plugins, seven, eight, it slows down your website. I have seen websites with 14, 15, 25 plugins, and they are wondering why it doesn't load. Um, yes, a lot of themes are coming already with, uh, with some features which I name my um, premium themes. The Avada and UDesign are one of these. They already in the theme have so many features built in which I then don't need a plugin for that adds up on the loading time. By the way, I just finally remembered what I forgot before, what is speaking against <laughs> Wix and GoDaddy. A lot of them are not mobile compliant or you have to build two sites. So mobile compliant, we all we all are right here, right? The second screen. We do our researches, our browsing on the phone next to the TV. If your site doesn't show up mobile, a whole bunch of people out there don't find it. Wix, for example, a lot of the themes are not showing up on phones. It tells you, hey, you need to download the new Flash to see this website. Right. You just lost them. They are not going to get up, turn on their computer, and see what you were doing. 
That's huge. I mean, like Barbara just said, second screen. So we're, you know, we do. We live on our mobiles. Um, Jessica Jewell. Hi, Jess. Um, she's got a really, a really long um, question comment. I'm going to read part of it here. So regardless of the custom or templates, uh, what about visually articulating the story or understanding how the sales funnel fits into the click-throughs through the website, do you spend time educating and helping understand what opportunities might be missed? In mind, that is what it takes a website from just another website to something that stands out. What do you guys think? Do you spend time educating and helping um, understand what opportunities might be missed regarding, you know, educating them through the sales funnel and show, showing them how how to use their site and how to proactively use their site to make money? Mm -hmm. Do you guys do that? Do you guys show how to? You you got to. I'm like they want to see results out of their website. You want to see in Google Analytics that people are visiting it, that they are staying longer than just one page. So you gotta you gotta educate them what's out there, what's possible, and how things work. Even if it's just to a small extent that they just know what's possible. Mm -hmm. And, and I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say it. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about having um, a funnel, an email opt-in. So if you're doing all this engaging on different social media platforms, are you bringing people back home? So when they land on your website, even if it's a new website, you should be uh, capturing those leads from day one. Like, don't wait six months to put on an email opt-in box because. If you're spending time on any social media platform and someone stumbles across your website or blog, they may be interested in signing up for whatever you may have to offer. And so then I, that, that goes back to your content and owning your content. So we, we talked about WordPress, we talked about websites. How do you own your content that's stored on LinkedIn, that's stored on Facebook, that's stored on Google+, your contact lists, whether it's posts, photos, videos, how do you pull all that back so that you're in control of that information? What do you girls do to integrate that back into your home, so to speak? I look at it this way. You don't own your content that if it's sitting on another site. Mm -hmm. So with Facebook, you have all of your contacts, all of your friends. How do you pull out that personal information? How do you, how do you maintain that integrity? So if Facebook did shut down for three days and you needed to be in touch with somebody for business, how do you maintain those contact lists. That's why you get them over to your site and get their name and their email and their contact on your on your website because if Facebook shuts down you have nothing to pull back on from that so you have to get them over to your house in your Rolodex rather than in Facebook's. Plain mm -hmm. and simple as far as I see it. And your business yeah. is only as successful as the size of your Rolodex, right? Yeah, maybe. Even though the Rolodex doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. You're, I have one. Don't say that. I have one. <laughs> and well, I was just going to say, you have to be strategic about the content you share as well. So while you may be sharing your blog posts regularly on Facebook, you may also want to have posts that you share where you directly say, hey, sign up to my mailing list. I have, you know, you're missing out on insider content. So sprinkling those in, I mean, on Facebook, you could probably also have a, a specific tab and have people opt in, but just in your normal message routine, have that come out periodically where it's like, hey, you know, I know you're on Facebook, but don't forget to sign up here as well. So let and me play devil's advocate then, if I can keep going. Um, so you use MailChimp, say, to accumulate your address book. And then you send out your newsletter through MailChimp and have everybody sign up for your newsletter on your website. Does MailChimp then own your address list? How do you own that information? You can download it. Yeah. You literally, in an Excel spreadsheet, can download it and do a backup, which you should do with everything. Mm -hmm. No matter if it's Google, you can download all your information, back up your website. We know how bad these bots are. Um, MailChimp, any other email program, always have a backup of everything. Especially on the website, yes, you are self-hosted, but again, it's still somebody else. It's all yours, and you can download and have it all, but it's still hosted somewhere else. So you always want to have a backup of everything. I make a point on a monthly basis to download to an Excel file uh, 
and export my mailing list just because you know I mean lately you're hearing all these different sites are getting hacked and you never know when your username password could get compromised so at least you have that backup and uh, you can restart from scratch if need be I'd like to put it out there that you know what would your life be like if somebody walked away with your computer right now you know would oh. you be safe would your life be over would your business crash you know backing up I think is one of the most important ways to own your content because personally for me I lost a computer years ago and it took me forever to try and recover from that and you know I think Lainey mentioned to me she lost the backup of a backup and and so it's very important if you are going to own your information and Yvonne you made a good point always extract what you can and you know back up the back up the back up <laughs> so I use Evernote to back up all my stuff like I write everything in Evernote and then the girls and I we use um, Google Drive because we share a lot of content between ourselves but then I use a cloud backup that I actually pay for that I <laughs> so there are free cloud backups but I used one that I pay for because I did I lost I lost a, a one terabyte drive and that was a bummer and that was my, I lost everything. So I'd start, so build fresh. if your business was on that. You know, what would happen to you and your livelihood? Your, you know, the, the, the thing that gives you money, that lets you live. If you lost your business on your computer, you know, you only need to do it once to realize just how valuable backing up your stuff is and owning your content. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have three computers and usually... Any backups Brad gets, he makes sure I have a copy on my machine. I have a extra hard drives, external hard drives that I back up on. We have another computer just in case. And yeah, you've got stuff online. And the reason we do this and I'm so anal about it is because I have blown up some computers in my day and lost everything. And since I do videos for people, that video content can't just be found anywhere else. I have that and people have taken time to make that I have to make sure that I have masses of copies because if my one machine goes out and I don't have it and I have to call and say would you get in front of the camera and do that again yeah. that's not gonna work and same with your website if you can put it ten different places because you've got chips you've got externals do it it's not gonna hurt anything and some of these services you can you can automate it so you don't necessarily have to physically sit there and copy every file right like with WordPress there's plugins that automatically um, sync it to Dropbox so you've got it like backed up somewhere else and then if you want to copy that file to your computer these are all processes you don't have to do manually and if you have a good hosting company so what happens with us is on my WordPress site itself, I'm using Backup Buddy, probably what you just thought about. Um, it lets you back up the whole site or just parts of it on the server. You can then also save it off site. And a good hosting company usually also regularly runs backups. So my hosting company has backups daily, weekly, and monthly. So the daily ones always get overwritten. If I don't call him today, I need a backup from yesterday, tomorrow it's going to be gone. Then you have the weekly one that switch out every week and you have the big monthly one. So if I get hacked, if everything happen, anything happens, we have double and triple backups. I would say though for anybody new, if you think you're going to go in in some WordPress plugins or even in your cPanel and do a backup, talk to someone like Yvonne or one of the girls and find out because if you just do a database backup and you don't do a home backup, you're going to lose your pictures, you're going to lose your a lot of stuff. So there's more than just a simple little backup. There's different types of backups. So right. get a hold of someone that knows and I'm sure Yvonne would be, we've got videos on it on our site and stuff but get a hold of someone and make sure when you're doing a backup and you're feeling secure that you're backing up everything you need. I don't yeah. want to get geeky because you, me and Yvonne will get too geeky and we'll blow up. But <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to make sure out. they knew. Nerded yeah, out. I know <laughs> people are, no matter if it's Bob, Blaney, Cheryl, Sandy or me, there are enough people out there who are more than happy to help you. Um, as all four of us, five of us, five, um, we share information. We are not the old style. The old style was boxing you in, taking your logins. You don't know how to get your stuff. We keep all our information. Luckily, this is finally changing. 
So people really share information, start Googling, look at blogs. You will find people that are more than happy to help you and give you some pointers without charging you an arm and a leg for it. And if you yeah. girls have any special tools, there we go, drinking. Tools. Um, <laughs> if you girls have any special tools or programs, um, things that you find that make your life easier, um, could you put the links to them in the comments after the show? They're all silent. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're in the green room, we couldn't stop talking. What's happening now, girls? Come on, you're it, it, it was a <laughs> nod of agreement. It was unanimously silent. <laughs> unanimously we three, silent. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were all like, we have this stuff, so, you know, no problem. Now, you know, now we are finally listening to Lainey and one person at a time and we get in trouble too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on that note, let's go to the comments. <laughs> that was really funny. Um, Heather Crafter, watching Yvonne nerd out makes me happy. <laughs> I, I haven't even started yet. No, she hasn't started yet, people. You don't even know. And then Heather said again, um, Barb Jasper is genius. How do you get them from one spot one spot to the site? Just what I was wondering. So that was a great question. Um, and Jess again, uh, ha ha ha, Rolodex, powerful points, sharing the drives to website, connecting through email or on website comments outside of social media. Yay. So and then um, Sunny call Sunny, I can never pronounce your last name, Sunny, I'm sorry. Um, hashtag back it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, give me your hashtag for the show. So, back it up, baby. Um, Brian said, um, self-hosted one-click installs are great, but it is vital to keep WordPress and other scripts updated. Vital. Yes, yelling deliver it since it's ignored by many. Yes, I think please. I think that the three of you would probably agree with that, right? Um, and I'll just jump right in there because Joe posted something like that, too. He said, a tech coach suggested that we must update a theme before updating plugins. Um, yes. I just muted myself instead of taking the screenshot off. <laughs> um, yes, always update. There is a reason why people send out theme updates. Coders are not perfect. Um, there can be issues in the coding. There can be loopholes that hacker find. And you want to fix these issues. So you want to update your WordPress, you want to update your theme, and you want to update your your plugin. And again, back it up first. There can be problems with older running plugins, with the new WordPress, or with the new theme. It is technical. It is electronics. It breaks. So before you update anything, back it up. <laughs> You've so, been told, people. You've been <laughs> So um, I want to say that you know you guys are going to put some resources in the comment thread. It sounds like we um, are going to be looking at doing a workshop series. So um, to all of our audience, if you guys are interested in learning more, diving into um, you know website building, self hosting, getting some more knowledge, um, you know put it in the comments so we can see if there's really interest. We've got some interest. We know there's a little bit, but. Um, we've been talking with Yvonne and, and Cheryl and Sandy, and uh, there might be an opportunity to do a, an actual workshop, not a show, where we're actually going to do some education and really dive into it. And um, and uh, if you guys need help as an audience, um, we have a category in the community in those four girls, and you guys know about this, right? It's called I Need Help. So if you have questions, concerns, you need, like, you just need help on any topic, Throw it in there, and I can't tell you the response when somebody needs help is just outrageous. I mean, in a good way, outrageous. You know, that's people just dive in, they answer questions, they give you resources. So the community is a great place to to dive in and get some questions answered um, without having to go find a, a resource that you just don't know and don't trust. So. Um, so I encourage everybody to go in there. If you do have questions, you can put them here in the comments, um, but you can also go into the community um, and do that. And so we've got like six minutes left. Um, any any comments you are interested in, in tagging really quick and touching on before we uh, do our the ending and the wrap up? I have one last one pinned. Let's throw that fast in. Sunny said um, she likes to stay on WordPress.com because it takes care of the mobile display. And I muted myself again. Um, 
if you are if you're looking into updating your WordPress site or building a new one, just look for responsive themes. Responsive themes squish everything to the screen where it is. It still keeps your nice layout, everything you have done. You keep the nice look, but it's completely mobile compliant, and you have to not deal with anything in the background. Greatest well, invention ever. The U Design theme is great for that. Very responsive, as well as the Elegant theme from Theme Forest. They're both two really responsive themes. Look at Barb. I'm nerded out just a little. Just a little. <laughs> so, um, so let's go. Through, you know, tell us where to find you guys. Um, we loved having you on. Um, our pre green room, green room, and then our green room was just full of nonsense and content, and we could have had a show just out of our green rooms. Um, but t tell us where to find you guys and what your call to action is. And Yvonne, I'll start with you. Okay. Um, as you can see somewhere probably right around here, I got my website as well as my blog. Um, if you want to nerd out more, just find Ask Evie on Google+. My personal profile is a little bit more personal. Um, tip of the day, get your logins. Also save them on a piece of paper. Don't let the developer keep your logins. And back it up. <laughs> Back it up, baby. Cheryl, what's your uh, call to action and where do we find you? Uh, for this type of stuff, uh, we have a Hot Blog Tips YouTube channel where when people ask questions, I try to make a video. We have a lot of the geekier stuff on there because the other stuff I do is more bit for other businesses. And you can find me on Google Plus. Under my personal profile, it's kind of... Uh, whatever I post but yeah with hot blog tips we can answer questions for you awesome and, and my tip of the day oh yeah I, I almost yes, forgot tip of the day. <laughs> my tip is and you're gonna have to do a little research or ask for details but before you buy a domain name no matter how cute you think it is do some research to make sure it wasn't marked as spam by Google by your email servers all of that because just because it's a cool sounding e or domain name it could have been used for something bad and you don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Wow, okay, you guys need to put your tips into the comment thread too so everybody <laughs> has that and you might need to give some more details on that. <laughs> Yvonne shaking her head so we <laughs> could do not this. Yeah. The show. Let's not talk about it today. <laughs> I know, another show, another day. Um, Sandy? <laughs> Yeah, so connect with me. You can just start, a good starting point is Google+, and in my profile I have all the places you can find me online, so circle me um, if you want. And my tip is consider your website as your home, and when you spend time on other social media platforms, think of people bringing people back home and make sure your home is presentable and ready to accept guests. I like that. That's really brilliant. Good job, guys. Thanks for the tips. And Barb, do you want to talk about the workshop coming up and all of that? Or do you want me uh, to talk about it? Uh, you can talk about that. Um, I will let you talk about that because you and Ralph have been spearheading that one. Um, I want to say that my tip of the day is that if you haven't already joined us at our community, come say hi and join in. You will meet lots of lovely people like these ladies you've met today who have lots of um, collaboration and tips and support to offer you. And um, it's just fun to hang out there. We've got lots of great guys, too. So you can find me at Plus Barb Jasper or, or at those four girls community. Awesome. So now you yeah. can talk, lady, and you can talk about the workshop. <laughs> great. <laughs> Again, we missed Shannon. She is sick, so you guys can all send her some love and some healing power and prayers, if you can, so we can get her back um, up and... Uh, those four girls community, like Barb said, come join us. We did a, a show a couple, a few weeks back on um, traffic, how to find your buying audience and how to direct them to your website. How convenient is this, right? So we're going to be doing a workshop March 18th. Uh, you can find, we'll put the post, the link to register uh, in the community on the thread and everybody that was in that show. And if you're interested from this show, we'll send you a notification and send out the information to you so you guys can register for that. It will be free, and it will be probably an hour to an hour and a half long. It'll be the first of many workshops. Uh, this is going to be talking about your ideal client profile to help you really narrow down who your client is and what you're, you know, who you're trying to target. Um, you can find me anywhere on Google at Lainey Sullivan and, of course, in the community at Those Four Girls. So thanks, everybody, for uh, being here today. 
thanks, girls, um, ladies, for popping in and sharing your knowledge. You guys are amazing geniuses, and um, I'll be picking your brains after the show. Thanks, <laughs> so, girl. Thanks, everybody. Have a thanks. great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.